She has been a pioneering force in the art world in Africa ever since the 1960s. She's a key figure in the modern art movement in her own native country, Sudan, a visual artist, a teacher, who's always looking for ways, creative ways, to break local conventions and reject the male-dominated worldview, always refusing the status quo. After graduating from the College of Fine Art in Khartoum, she then went on to study at the Royal College of Art in London and then embarked on an extraordinary journey with a group of students about 50 years ago. And that gave rise to a school, a school of thought called the Crystallist Group. She and a few of her students decided that they would see the world the way they see it, not the way it has been imposed on them. They wanted to explore life the way they saw it, free from any imposed ideologies, free from social taboos, and free from all forms of prohibition. Always looking for ways to express these ideals, she's been a valuable mentor to a younger generation of Sudanese and African women. Her art has captured the real and the imaginative, ambiguous and immaterial connections amongst women and men and between women, men, and nature. She is Kamala Ibrahim Ishag. And she is the recipient of this year's Principal Prince Klaus Award for what the committee has called her original, vibrant, and haunting artworks, as you can see, that encourage viewers to see multiple layers of expression beyond their physical appearance, for forging a non-sexist, metaphysical art that gives women a new image in a male-dominated society for her revolutionary intellectual challenge to the established artistic paradigm of Sudan and of so many African and Arab countries, for her integrity and her immense contribution to Sudanese artistic education and for her groundbreaking support and empowerment of women and for so much more. So please welcome, and it is my absolute pleasure to invite to the stage this year's Principal Laureate, Kamala Ibrahim Ishak. And this is where I get this wonderful opportunity to sit down with Kamala and to say salam and congratulations. What does this recognition, this honor, this award mean to you coming so late, should I say, in your career? Uh, you've been in the business for about six decades, if not more. <laughs> <laughs> Was it worth the wait? I just want to... <laughs> to say something before I talk about this. Uh, sorry, men, this is our year, because we are all women now. Who, who okay. got this? <laughs> uh, it means to me and to my people in Sudan, it is a great honor, really. And I'm very thankful to his Royal Highness, and to the people of the Netherlands, and to the Netherlands itself, and to the committee who thought I deserve this uh, honor. Thank you all. And I'm sure your many students also probably, definitely agree that you do deserve this honor. I hope you won't mind me revealing your age. Goodness. You, <laughs> you are 80 years you old and still, still going I so strong. Again? <laughs> How often do you paint? You do you know still in the paint? media, you all know it. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we, you know, we <laughs> have to bring out something. <laughs> what else? Um, but how often do you still paint? Because those who know you believe that you still find it in you to paint every day. And you yourself have said yes, I do. painting for you isn't something that comes from the heart, but from the soul. It is from the soul, not from the heart. I paint every day. I don't know since when, except for very few periods uh, when I was occupied with other things. But uh, since I started painting, I don't stop. Because I think if you stop painting then, or you're doing your art, then it will be very difficult to go back and do it. You often say that you hope your art will make people think about the world around them. 
What is it that you wish or hope that people take away with them when they look at your pieces of work? I wish they like it. But <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes I think they don't like my work. <laughs> yeah, and so many people don't really. Um, but I wish, I wish they do like it. What about uh, painting in a country like Sudan, which is often referred to as a more conservative, more repressive society, where you might imagine that art is often seen not as a basic need, but more as a luxury? How much support did you have growing up and painting in a country like Sudan? Actually, for women, it wasn't uh, before, it wasn't repressive. Um, women used to do artworks in their houses. If you see in the north, they decorate the houses uh, in and outside the house. In the west, they do very beautiful works of uh, straws. In the south and west, west and east, they do bead works. And this is all art because this is their own creation. And it is our tradition women do artworks in Sudan. Although they say it's not, but it is, it is, it is work of art. And today when you look at the youth movements, not just in Sudan, but in other countries in the region that are going through a certain popular uprising, and Sudan went through its popular uprising a few months ago, in fact, many people would consider it a revolution. Uh, a lot of artwork suddenly uh, came into the open with people painting on murals, on walls, on canvases, on just about anything. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this youthful movement that is saying so much through art, expressing its frustrations and its aspirations? In, in this revolution, the last one, I mean, art is the leading uh, eff effective group for, uh, in the revolution, uh, boys and girls, and, you know, I mean artists. <laughs> uh, they did the beautiful works in the all the walls of the town and in the streets and everywhere. And before that, uh, poetry was the leading force in the revolution, the, or the one before this was. And I'm very happy that uh, the artists are the leading force in this revolution. And you often say that you see an artist away from uh, gender, that an artist for you yeah. is not dependent on his or her gender. Even though many of your paintings, it seems to me, uh, places women at the forefront uh, of society. Is that a biased view of your art? Or is that the reality? I don't think, uh, in, in a work of art, you don't look who did it, a woman or a man. It, this work of art, as it is, if it is a uh, success, it's okay. Who, it doesn't matter who did it. And I don't differentiate between, when I was teaching, I don't differentiate between women and men in my uh, teaching. And for you today, uh, when you look towards the future, what do you see? How, do you see many more years of you painting or perhaps breaking into another, another field altogether? What is it that you haven't done yet in your long uh, and very distinguished career that you hope you can still Each do? Each day, I think uh, I will try to do something new. You know. I'm still working, of course, and I'm still painting. Um, actually, I, did, I want to do a painting that it is too long, more than what I did before. So that's your next uh, project? Yeah, probably. Can you give <laughs> us a, a sneak preview as to uh, if what, I can, what the topic I mean, might be? I mean, if I can. <laughs> I'm thinking of adding so many meters. A big, big painting that we big can all look painting. forward to. And very small ones. And small uh, ones too. Uh, like babies as <laughs> Fariba was saying, uh, baby paintings. Well, maybe we can afford the baby paintings. <laughs> I don't know about the big one. Kamala no. Ibrahim Ishag, I wish we had more time to continue the conversation. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for Thank having me. Thank you so much me. for being here. Thank and congratulations you Thank you once very again. Much. Thank you. <laughs>